This is the first of a three-part video demo to demonstrate some basic UI handling in Unity. Um, I'm going to show in this video how to connect a button to the script, and then in two additional videos how to retrieve information from an input field as well as display information out from a text field. So um, I'm in Unity Hub. I'm going to start a new project. I'm choosing the version that I'll be working with. And in this case, I'll be demonstrating in a 3D uh, template, but this would work with 2D as well. So I'm going to go ahead and call my project name um, UI Demo. Call it UI Demo Basic. That would be fine. I'm just sticking it in on my desktop for now just so I can easily grab it. Okay, so for really anything to work, we need to have a script. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make a C-sharp class. And um, in my assets, I can either just click on this plus sign and say create the, the C-sharp script, or I can right click and say create C-sharp script. So essentially the plus is create. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to name it something. I'm going to call mine UI demo. And then, as you know, you need to attach your script to an object in the hierarchy, otherwise it's not going to just run on its own. So what I'm going to do is make a, an empty game object up here, name it script, and attach my script to that so I can find it. So if I go here, I'm going to click plus, I'm going to say create empty, and I'm going to go ahead and rename that just by double clicking script. Okay. And at that point, and in fact, I could call this UI script. This is the only script I'm going to do, so I'm just calling it script here. So I'm going to attach my script to the empty game object. All right. So now that it's attached, I'm going to go ahead and go into the C Sharp script. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click here. And it's really a chicken and egg sort of thing where I could make a button first and then make the script or I could make the script and then make the button. So it's um, either way I need to go back to the button to attach it. So I'm choosing to make the script first. When I'm in my script, notice as usual it creates some um, default things. In this example I am not using start and I'm not using update. I'm simply um, going to be creating a custom class. So for this particular demo, I'm going to get this out of the way. Um, it's not needed for me, but in some cases you may have those methods still there. Okay, so for a button to run, I need to create a custom method to connect my button to. And then inside that method, I can put whatever commands I'd like to run. So I'm going to go ahead and make a custom method. I'm just going to call it my demo button. Usually you'd call a method by what it's actually doing, some sort of a significant name. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm going to be showing a couple of things. But if, for instance, you want to have a start game or save, typically you'd name your method something to that effect. So this is not a magical name. It's just something that I'm picking right now. Now, if you're not familiar with methods too much, I just want to point out a couple of things. Um, this public is just saying that it can be accessed outside of this class, and that's going to be required in order to attach the, um, the button to this script. So if this was private, I wouldn't be able to find the script to attach it to. So this is important. And when you see the word void, what that's referring to is saying that this method is not going to be returning a value to any other location. So there are some methods that calculate something or get some information and send it back to where it was called. In this case, this method is just going to run, so that's what void is. So I'm sure you see that quite often. And now this is the name of my method. Uh, the, the parentheses are required, and then of course the curly braces, and this is where um, this is where you're going to put what you'd like to happen. So since this is a really basic demo, I think just to start out, I'm going to display something to the console. And I think testing would be appropriate. So in this case, if this method is run, it will then debug log and print to the console. So this is a fine amount of information right here just to see if the button's connected up. I'm going to go ahead and save this. 
and jump back into my Unity project. And then it's time to make a, a button. So what I'm going to do is up here in the hierarchy view, click on this plus sign. And if you have an older version, it might say create. I'm going to go to UI and choose button. Now, if you notice in the in the hierarchy, it not only creates a button, but it creates a canvas. So all of the UI elements end up living on the canvas essentially. And so it'll build one automatically. Now there is a thing here where you could add a canvas, um, I believe, and then the button, but you don't have to do it in that order. You could just make the button or the field and it'll make the canvas for you. Now in 3D, working with UI elements can be a little weird because notice it shows up really strange. Um, even if I zoom out, it's like kind of backwards and, and maneuvering this is a little difficult. So what I've found to work the best is click on this little 2D button up in the scene. So if I do that, it'll switch it to just looking at my scene in a 2D way. And the canvas is essentially going to um, go over my entire screen when it runs. So it's not actually in relationship to um, any objects on the screen. It's kind of its own thing. So right now it still looks a little weird in 2D. Um, if for some reason the button is still, you know, gigantic or something, a quick way to get to it is just double click on that object and it'll bring it to the center. And then even still, what I want to do is zoom out. I'm just using my wheel mouse and then my right mouse button to maneuver it. And what you see here by this line is the canvas and that line is going to be invisible. It's just showing us the outline. So if you can imagine, this is the border of your screen. So what we want to do is move this button to where we want it to be. Sometimes buttons and stuff will be automatically created off of the canvas. I'm not quite sure why. It seems kind of an odd thing. But what we want to do is move it somewhere um, where we can use it. And I'm going to do something a little boring. I'm just going to do um, three things in a row. I'm going to end up making a text field where somebody can enter something, have my button that they can push, and I'll be displaying some information. Now if I hit play, um, it's just going to show my button on the screen and notice I've got the skybox in the background, which is a little weird if I'm just doing some, some basic input output. So, um, this is not required for functionality, but I'm just going to show you how you could quick change it to a, a blank background. Um, I'm going to go to main camera and over here, instead of skybox, I'm going to change that to solid color and I can go here and choose the color I'd like. Now I kind of like this blue, so I'm going to keep it. And then when I hit play, notice it'll have a, a blank background. So it's just a little easier to see what's going on if you have things where it's, let's say, a, a setting screen or something. Okay, so I've got my button. Um, and there are a couple things you can do. If you want to rename your button, you may. You can just um, uh, click on it again and change the name. Since I only have one button, this is fine. But like, I don't really want my button just to say button. That's kind of weird. So in the button hierarchy, you can click on this little triangle next to it and notice there's this text element underneath it. If I select that, over in the inspector, that's where I can change the name that's displayed. So for text, um, I'll um, submit info or whatever you'd like it to say. So we can we can uh, um, change that. Okay, so I've got my um, button here. And now if I run it, nothing's going to happen yet because I don't have that connected. So I can click on this button as much as I want. Nothing is showing up in the console. So we need to connect this button to the script that we created. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is I've got my button selected and in the inspector I can scroll down and notice there's a little on click section so I can determine what function is going to happen when I click it. Notice it says list is empty so I need to, to add something to this. So I'm going to click on this plus sign and what I need to do is say what object I want to run and then what function in that method in that object I want to actually um, use. So the script that we're using is attached to the script object here, right? 
So this is a little weird where notice I clicked on this and then the, it disappears here. So I need to have button selected. Scroll, oops, scroll down here. And then I click, but um, don't let go yet. I'm clicking and dragging script to the section here where it says none object. And when I let go, it will then connect up to that script game object. Now this pull down becomes active and notice it says no function. I need to choose the method that I want to run. Now in Unity, the word method and function seems to be intertwined. A lot of people just say function, but um, usually generally with C sharp, you'd refer to it as a method. So I would say consider it interchangeable. So, but here I click and I choose the script that I want to use. So if there were multiple scripts attached to that object, I'm using UI demo. And then I find the method I used. And so I called mine my demo button. So I click on that. So what's going to happen is when on click, it is going to go here to the script and run my demo button, which should output to the console. So let me hit play. And then console is blank right now. And if I hit submit info, notice it says testing. And I could click that multiple times and it will display as many times as I want. So I'm going to continue this, this demo in, like I said, two other videos. Um, if you were just looking for button connection, you're all set. Um, but the next video, I'm going to show how to get information from an input field.